Hi, my name is Eugene Chen. I'm from the University of Nottingham, Ningbo, China, and at the School of Computer Science. Um, in the last video, I presented to you um, an introduction to the elements of computing systems, uh, building a modern computer from first principles. And I covered binary systems and how we can use binary numbers or bits, binary digits, either 8 bits, 16 bits, and so on, to represent data and store data. Now today, I'm going to cover how we can use uh, a Boolean uh, logic, essentially using um, logic gates, which are actually a um, combination of, uh, of bits to compute data. We can use binary digits to represent data, store data, but we can also use binary digits to compute data. And that's how computers work, it's how calculators work, how memory works, and so on. So this is a, um, the second video on this topic. And in this video, I will tell you how we can construct um, the very foundation of logic gates. We call that the NAND gate. It's a not AND gate, okay? Building from uh, electronic component, uh, which is the transistor. So I'll show you, uh, introduce you what transistor, very briefly what transistors are, how they work, and how we can construct logic gates using transistors. So modern computers and all the components, for example, the logic gates, you know, leading up to multiplexers, demultiplexers, your memory units, um, all kinds of components within computers, they are made up of millions or billions of transistors and at a very nano size. So the very first transistor was created in 1947 at Bell Labs, and you see here the transistors, you know, first family of electronics, you know, early point contact transistors and so on. So how small can transistors get? You know, it's down to the very nano size. You know, obviously you, you can't see this with your eye, and this has to be uh, using a, a highly powerful um, microscope of some sort. But uh, looking at the blood cell, you know, at, you're looking at the sense of scale. You get seven thousand nanometers, and a nanometer is one millionth of a, of a millimeter. So transistors are extremely, extremely small. And you know, looking at this graph from uh, Wikipedia, we can see that the uh, transistor size has been decreasing continuously over the years, and you know, coming down to the size of a one phosphorus atom. And you know, the smaller the transistor size gets, the more you can fit into a smaller size unit. You know, that's why we have you know highly powerful smartphones today, uh, consisting of, of tiny, tiny transistors. So all your computer components, including everything that is in your smartphone, calculators, you know, the computer chips inside your refrigerator and so on, they are all built from nano-sized transistors. John Lesbury, the American poet, gave a statement, such simple things and we make of them something so complex it defeats us, almost. And this is what transistor, you know, transistors are. They are such simple things but the things that they can create, you know, the complex things that they can simulate is beyond us. It is quite amazing. So what is a transistor and how do they work? So if you can see, there are two types of transistors. One is the NPN, one is the PNP, and the diagram is as such. The um, positive voltage passes through here, so coming in from the collector for the NPN, and the ground is over here. So current, you know, a larger current passes through and you've got the base. The base can be a small current. So the base acts as a switch. If you, if the base is switched on, then the current passes through. If not, then the current doesn't. So just showing you the size of the transistor. Um, this is, a, of course, it's a much larger size. You know, the transistors in your computer component is much, much smaller at, at the nanoscale. So this is the, the picture that I showed you earlier. You've got a collector, base, and an emitter. So current passes through, and this center one is a switch. Now you can actually use this to build logic gates, and this is what I've done. So it's not connected to the power, but um, this is a NAND gate, and I'll show you what a NAND gate is. Representations of a simple logic gate. Um, this is the uh, NAND gate that I showed you. It's a uh, transistors built onto a circuit board with other electronic components connected as the NAND gate, as I said. So uh, if you look at this diagram, 
and I've actually got a simulator here to show you how the NAND gate works. So if the current, see the current can be larger, uh, 5 volts, passes through transistor, uh, resistor, connected to a LED light, yeah, and this is the ground, okay, so so now we have two NPN transistor here, so that's the collector, emitter, collector coming in, emitter and the base. So the base are connected to a much smaller current at 0 0.7 volts. So there's a there's a simulator. So I'm going to show you the simulator, how the simulator works. Okay, so this is a NAND gate. As you can see, current passes through here, and if the switches are not switched on. You know that's connected to the base of transistors, the base collector emitter, right? Then it's switched on. But if you switch this on, the LED light is still uh, shining. Okay. If you switch this on, the LED light is also still shining. But if you happen to switch both of this on, then the LED light is switched off. So that gives you the very very foundation of the NAND gate logic. Okay, so if right, if either of these is switched on, the LED light is still switched on. If none of them is switched on, the LED light is still switched on. But there's only one case where you, when you switch on the first transistor and the second transistor, and you have this state of the LED light being switched off. So coming back to the PowerPoint slides, we are looking at the physical version of a NAND gate and a simulated version of a NAND gate. Now NAND gates can be represented using a diagram and this is the diagram. So, so you know the there's an N gate and the N gate is without this little circle here. So NAND gate has two inputs, one output. Actually all logic gates have uh, that kind of input except for the NOT gate. So we've got an A input and a B input, and this is equivalent to an A input here. The B is equivalent to the B input, and you've, been, you've got an out, right, which is actually represented by the, the LED lights. Um, now, the transistors are not included in this, but the, the NAND gate has a representation. So the logic gate diagram of the NAND gate. And as you can see, this is the input A, input B, and the LED light represented here. This is how a NAND gate transistors, uh, NAND gates look like in uh, using a physical component. Now, um, so we also have a symbolic representation. We've got the function of A and B, and that's the output. The output is A and B with a not. So this is a not A and B, right? Um, we also have a tabulated format. Um, a tabulated representation of the NAND gate as a simple logic gate and as you can see earlier so if both of these is not switched on then the LED light is switched on that's one okay so this is the LED we call it the X1 the out um, and I also showed you earlier if any of these right is switched on the LED light remains on. So in both cases, the LED, the out, is one, is on. Um, in the final state, the final case, if two of these switches are switched on, then we can see that the out becomes off. So the LED light goes off. So this is how a simple NAND gate works from transistors. They are all the same. This is physical, the tabulated format, the uh, diagrammatic logic gate representation, the simulated version, and also the symbolic representation. They're all the same. So this brings us to the very end of the video on how we can use transistors, what they are, uh, in order to build a basic logic gate called the NAND gate. The physical version, um, symbolic representation, tabulated format, diagrammatic view, and and so on. So if you enjoyed this video and learned something from it, then please subscribe to me, comment and like. As always, thanks for watching.